Now, urgent action is needed to tackle the problem of youth unemployment, according to a new report by the House of Lords Youth Unemployment Committee. They say there need to be reforms to career guidance and further education funding, as well as new strategies to tackle discrimination and skills gaps. The report says COVID-19 was a perfect storm for youth unemployment, with 70% of job losses among the under 25s. Well, this follows a separate report that questions whether the government's kickstart scheme introduced to help young people to get into work is actually working. Bill Balkett is a political reporter and a commentator with Young Voices uh, UK. Bill, uh, a very good morning to you. Uh, do you recognise um, the problems that are cited in this report and what their recommendations are? Absolutely. Um, and there's some absolutely stark findings in there. I think it's nearly 500,000 young people are unemployed. I think it's equivalent to around 11% um, worse than many developed countries for that matter. You also have around 600,000 people that are not in education or in further education. Uh, many of them, of course, were in the furlough scheme uh, over the last 18 months. So it's a chronic issue. But the truth is, is that actually youth unemployment in this country particularly has been a persistent issue uh, since the recession with declining wages and also struggles to, uh, as we're seeing with uh, problems with the labour market uh, shortage in skills uh, and also certain professions, uh, particularly engineers. I think there's something like uh, 20,000 uh, shortage of engineers and also in other professions as well. Yeah, um, uh, I mean, there's a lot of recommendations uh, from this Lord's report for the government to look at. There's also, at the same time, there's a report from the National Audit Office uh, about the Kickstart scheme, which was uh, launched in September last year, designed to create six month work placements for young people on universal uh, credit. And it's essentially saying that the scheme, uh, it, it couldn't give enough assurances over whether it had actually helped enough young people into work, whether that was having any positive effects, and that actually um, some of the jobs that it did create, 100,000 jobs that it did create, um, could have been created anyway without the scheme, in effect rendering it a bit of a waste of money. What do you know about this Kickstart scheme, and, and do you think it's been effective enough? Well, the Kickstart scheme, as you know, was uh, introduced by uh, Chancellor Rishi Sunak uh, during the pandemic in order to bolster uh, youth unemployment and to get them back onto the labour market. And as you said, it has been successful in some areas in creating, I think, uh, around 100, 150,000 jobs. And Rishi Sunak is extending uh, the scheme uh, until March. He announced it at the Conservative Party conference um, back in October. Uh, but as you said, there have been a lot of criticisms uh, of the scheme as well, because even though what you're seeing with the market uh, at the moment is that while there is um, shortages in many areas, I think there's a, around a million vacancies, uh, young people are still having problems of navigating the market. It's very tough. Uh, I think on average, it takes something like 100 job applications in order to just, you know, get one job, which you would desire to do and to and have the necessary skills for that. Um, and, um, and yeah, no, and I suppose the other issue that you have is with the skill shortage as well and the labor uh, with uh, particular with uh, with particular skills in certain areas of the economy like stem and also the government are trying to uh, recognize that while kickstart isn't the do or an end all they're all introducing other measures as well uh, like these new t levels which are supposed to be replacing uh, b tech qualifications which hopefully will get young people the necessary skills going forward for the future uh, but also have them have more work placements uh, and also get that experience um, in the office um, as well. Bill, you're speaking to this group, this generation, day in, day out. What do they want? What do you want? What's the question, Rosie? Um, I suppose the one thing they do, I, I suppose businesses in particular actually are very good when reaching out to young people. I think a, a quarter of them uh, but, but openly I mean, reach Bill, out to schools. Is this the generation of people who are at home itching to go out to work? They want experiences, they want opportunity. Or is there a slight attitude problem where think, people think, oh, do you know, not for me right now? No, de de there's definitely a demand for and young people are eager to get into the workplace. I mean, 
I've just finished the masters and I know that many people on my course are very eager to use the experience that they had on their journalism course in order to make their their mark you know in the workforce um but they just need that level of support and i think there needs to be more of a recognition also from businesses uh as well that the young bring creativity they bring innovation they bring high energy and also just an understanding of emerging technologies because ultimately in the report hints at this as well uh, is that a more diverse and dynamic workforce um, is a better workforce. We can't have um, the threat of having a lost generation in many ways, because in order for the economy to recover post-pandemic, um, you need that dynamic workforce and you need young people um, to be playing a central yeah. role in that. Yeah. Uh, Bill, just very quickly, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, but this Laws Report also says a young people's commissioner should be appointed to champion the voice of those aged 16 to 24. Do you have any any ideas? Doesn't have to be a politician. Who, who's who that would be? Who, who do you think young people look up to? Mm, who do young people look up to in particular? Um, I think one person in particular, actually, I really like, um, who's been speaking a lot in the news, is Martin Lewis, um, the uh, the founder and editor, money saving expert. Um, often, you know, gives a lot of. Um, you know, good advice when it comes to financial management, which I think young people need yeah. um, going forward and they need that support. And I think he would be a good figurehead um, to kind of maybe lead that. And as we see, there is um, uh, an independent young persons commissioner, I think, okay. uh, for, for children. So it would be great to see someone right. in that role as well. Interesting, interesting suggestion, Bill. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. That's Bill Balkett there, uh, who represents Young Voices.